Hello and welcome to Knit with Madeline. I'm Madeline. Thanks so much for clicking on this video and taking some time out of your day to spend with me while we chat about knitting, some completed projects, some ongoing projects, otherwise known as whips. Welcome back to all the returning viewers. I really appreciate you have I really appreciate having you here. Um, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Madeline. I am a current PhD student and I'm living in Belgrade, Serbia until mid-August, so coming up on the end. I do want to apologize for my rather long hiatus from anything YouTube related. As you can hear in my voice, I'm a little under the weather. So I have some tea. I recommend that you have something to drink as well. I'm hoping this won't be quite as long of an episode. Um, but yeah, I really do apologize for my hiatus. I had family visiting and then basically immediately after friends visiting and then immediately after a big deadline for a book chapter I hope to have published and then immediately after some travel for research and then we just got home, my partner and I, and we are both under the weather. So I took yesterday to recuperate. I'm feeling much better today. I'll give a bit more of a life update and what I've been doing on my Fulbright and whatnot at the end. Which brings me to the next point of business that, as always, there will be chapters in the time bar of this video as well as linked in the description. So if there's anything that you're particularly interested, go ahead and skip to it. And if there are things that you don't care too much about, feel free to skip them. So we are just going to hop right in to finished objects. And I just want to say before I begin, somebody gave me a really good tip of putting a mirror behind my phone while I film to be able to see what's going on. Unfortunately, due to my setup and being not in my home, I don't have a mirror that would work for that. But I recently got an Apple Watch and I can actually see myself while I'm filming on the Apple Watch. So I should be able um, to not have to say, can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? You should just be able to see what I'm showing. So if you ever see me kind of looking down weirdly at my wrist, that is why. So to begin, the first finished object is actually what I am wearing. It is the So Summer shirt by Jesse Made Designs. I'll go ahead and stand up so you can get a better view of it. All right, so here is the shirt. Here's the front and the back are very close. As you can see, it is very cropped, um, which granted most, I think most of Jessie Mae's um, garments that are cropped are very cropped, obviously very easy to add length. Um, mine was knitted in Echo Puno Degrade in a color I don't remember, but should be able to put the information here for you, as well as some leftover um, cream cashmere yarn that I was, that I bought from uh, concept by Katia is the name of the yarn. I added it to the sleeves as a little armband and then also um, for the neck hemline. Um, while it is very cropped, I use it as a sleep shirt, which is why I'm wearing it now because I'm a little under the weather. I want it to be comfortable. The yarn is really, really soft. I've worn it really a lot, um, quite a bit, and it's held up really well. I really like the shirt. I've never done a construction like this where you basically start, ooh, let's see if I remember. You start with the bottom hemline. Um, I chose to do folded hems on all of them, um, which took, the ones on the arms are really little and this one's not looking so great. Um, it did take some extra time, but I really do love the look, especially in the bottom. It gives this nice plush hem. And then you, I believe, yeah, you knit up in the round and then you split for the front and the back. You do some shoulder and neck shaping and then you join. And I have to say, oh, hard to see. I am obsessed um, with the three needle bind off. This hem or this join line or whatever you want to call it is so clean and so beautiful. It looks so good. And I did make some modifications. I believe in the original pattern um, that you just sort of stop the sleeves here and then add a little hem if you would like. I actually picked up the stitches and kept knitting just to give myself a little bit of a sleeve because it's what I'm most comfortable with and I really like it. I think the fit is nice. The pattern is incredibly well written as are all of Jessie Mae patterns. I believe I'll knit another one. I didn't love the process too much because it was a lot of flat knitting, therefore a lot of purling. And it was really more of a product knit for me than process and so I think I could have enjoyed it a bit more, but I do think I would make another one in the future. 
So moving right along to another finished object that you've definitely seen me talk about plenty of times before, um, but I did just want to show you that I completed the Ripple Bralette um, once again. I did modify it. It is a bit stretched out right now because I did wear it and it needs to be washed. Fortunately, this had chalk fiber superwash yarn. I put it through the washing machine, had absolutely no problems. It shrunk right back down to size. Wonderful. Um, so what I did is the first time I knit this, I knit a size 1XL. This time I did just a large, and then I added a lot of length to this bottom band. It's hard to tell right now because it's stretched out, but when it's its actual size, I think the band is probably about that long, whereas before it was less than half of that size. However, I'm still having basically the exact same fit problems. It's a little bit better, um, but I think my main issue is I should have added length to the actual cup part of the bralette as well. I do think that the large is the correct size for me. I think that I could have gone with less length for the bottom band and more length in the three by three, three by three, wow. The three by three, the three by three ribbing could have used some extra length and that will give me the perfect fit where my gals don't basically kind of slip out the bottom and not be in it, let's just say. Um, I've just been wearing it mainly as like a sleep thing underneath this shirt actually, um, because I really can't be bothered to knit it a third time right now. I do have left over from the yarn um, and I'm hoping at least one day to maybe undo it one more time and then finally get sort of my perfect bralette. At least now moving forward, I think I can make another one and feel confident that it will fit me well and all will be good. And then finally, another finished object um, that I've talked about before, haven't really shown in a few of the other podcasts because I made absolutely no progress, um, are my, my socks. My nice ribbed socks. Sorry, there's some stuff on them because I wore them last night. Um, I started these socks on the plane ride here um, from the US to Serbia. So they have been in progress for a really long time. I usually only work on them when we are going somewhere, sitting on a bus, a train, whatever. Um, I finished the first one pretty quickly. This was the first one. I talked about it in a previous podcast, basically about needing to add length to the top and then picking it up and knitting up and kind of gave it a little bit of a funky look, but definitely works. And then I just finished this one, the second sock, yesterday. And the reason why um, is because I wanted to start a new project for a trip I'm taking soon with my mother who's coming to visit. But the needles I needed for that project were being used by this sock. And so we took a very long train ride to Niš, a town in southeastern Serbia, um, not far from Sofia and not far Bulg Go uh, uh, Bulgaria, the capital of Bulgaria, Sofia, and not far from Pristina, the capital of Kosovo, in case you were wondering, sort of the geography of the area around Niche. Um, I actually got yelled at on the train by the conductor that I was not allowed to knit on the train because it is dangerous. Um, so I stopped knitting and then on the way back I had no problems and I just knit because I'm fairly confident that I won't decapitate or impale my eye while knitting on a drain that is doesn't move um except for forward so i finished them i did the kitchener when i got home my second sock is they're, they're both a little bit wonky um but they do the job very well i love oops sorry i lost my little i lost my viewfinder come back there we go i love this colorway um, I think it's really beautiful. It's just Patton's Croy, so it's literally like $7 at Michael's, a craft store in the US. I just, I love the way that it's self-striped. I really love the colors. Um, and I will definitely probably use, definitely probably, I will definitely um, use this yarn again for some socks because I, I just really like it. I do have some other Patton's Croy with me. Let me grab it. It's in this really fun color, um, which is called... What's it called? Clover colors. I bought this a really long time ago. Um, 
a really long time ago when I first started knitting socks in Arizona and I haven't used it. I also thought I got another one called Mexicali, um, which was also kind of a similar colorway of like these very bright sort of yellows and greens and oranges. I thought this one was that, I guess it's not. I must have left that one at home and didn't bring it with me because I didn't imagine I'd be knitting too many socks. I don't know if I'm going to pick this up next. There are some Sari Nordland patterns that I bought recently for some really beautiful socks that I think I will use some Malabrigo yarn I bought at the McKinney Knittery to knit. I really had like a complex about not using like expensive, really nice yarns for socks. For some reason, I just didn't think that socks deserved such nice quality, but I think for really beautiful sock patterns that have a lot of detail or in intricacy um, that I will maybe wear with shoes that you can actually see the socks, I think I see the value and I'm just going to do it because right now the yarn is just kind of languishing in my little drawer and it it serves better. It has more purpose actually being used for something. Um, so I might cast that on. The needles that I need for that, again, are being used on this project I'm working on, which I'll show you in a moment. So that might have to wait. I know I could just go out and buy more needles, but I actually think it's kind of a nice motivation to get certain projects done. And so right now, I don't think I'll be buying any more needles until I return home and just sort of use it as a way to force myself to get things done. So the next finished object I have is really, to me, the most exciting. Um, it's a gift knit for my mother. I've shown it in progress in the past. It is the Kalashal by Natasha Hornby. And let me, let me show you this beauty. I might need to get up because I want to show you the actual size. Um, but it is this massive, ma oh, it's looking so beautiful. I can see it. It is this really large, it's a very large triangular shawl shape um, with calla lily cables, basically, all along it. So you start, I'll just show you this half. It's a little un unwieldy. Um, I'm not talking to you, Siri. I just want to be able to see what I'm showing people. Um, so you start up here with a garter tab and then it grows out and you do this sort of, I think it's a broken seed stitch or broken rib. And then you do your first set of calla lilies, not very many. You knit some more, you do your second sit, set, and then you do your border set, which is just like, bam, lots of flowers. Um, and they have eyelets all around them to separate themselves from their other flower friends. And it goes all the way to the edge. And it is just, I mean, can we talk about this? Like, it's so large and it is so beautiful um i want to keep it for myself i just i want to keep showing it i'm obsessed with it it's so beautiful mine might have come out larger oh here's the back in case you were curious um mine might have come out a little bit bigger because my gauge was slightly off i had more stitches per inch I believe, um, than the gauge required. And that is because I used a very different yarn. The pattern, and I talked about this in a previous podcast, so I won't talk about it too, too much. Actually, I think the last podcast, um, the re recommended yarn is Tandem by West Wool, um, Stephen West brand, which I would really love to try, but that's a very wooly yarn. It's 100% wool. And I knit this for my mother, who lives in the middle of a very hot desert. So that wasn't, and a desert that doesn't get cold at night. So that wasn't going to work for her. So I used Malabrigo. I believe the base is Cicero. The information will be on the screen as well as the color, but it's essentially a silk, linen, and merino yarn, very little merino, um, which is exactly what I was looking for because I knew I needed some wool to provide um, some kind of structure for these cables and it's so soft it's so plush um, I'm I need to block it I'm a little bit scared to do that mostly because I'm not entirely certain how the yarn will turn out after it's blocked 
I do have um, a gauge square that I could block and see, but there isn't a rose on the gauge square. And so I'm just worried that because they're cables and they require some structure, that blocking them might make them a little bit flat. But I was also, these ones are already a little bit flat. Um, these ones up here, just from existing for a really long time. So I think I will just give it a block, cross my fingers. If it something happens, I'll just show my mom this clip from the podcast and say, look how beautiful it once was. Um, but I am just, I'm so proud of this. Sorry, this is not a good. I'm so proud of this. I was really intimidated when I started knitting this. I was inspired by Kirsten Lair um, from her, and she talked about it on her YouTube channel, she knitted it with like a wooly yarn and it looked absolutely beautiful. I was so nervous to do this. I thought it'd be way over my head. It really isn't. Granted, there were some times that I had to completely rip out some of the flowers and start again. I did make some mistakes on some of the flowers and just decided, you know what, design choice and moving forward. And I'm really glad I did because as we got to the end, I was really just whipping out these flowers perfectly. It's really just left and right cables and central decreases and eyelets. You can do it. So if you are just really look at this shawl and just say, wow, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, which is exactly what I think and everybody else should think, and you want to knit one, I would really recommend it. I will definitely knit another one for myself because it's just gorgeous and it's really big and I just want to be swaddled in it. I will probably knit my own out of a wool, wooly yarn because I now live in a very cold climate in the US and will actually get use out of it as a schlanket essentially. And I just think it's so refined and beautiful. So I'm really excited to knit another one of these. That will wait until the fall when the weather starts um, indicating that the cold is coming. I will say one last thing. I did modify it slightly besides using different yarn. The original pattern here, let me, fold, I had this folded nicely and then I unfolded it because I'm obsessed with it. And now I want to fold it again so I can just show you one specific area. Come on, it's really big. Um, so, and again, I lost my little viewfinder. I guess this actually isn't a very good solution, so sorry, bear with me. Um, I decided to bind off with an I-cord edge um, for a few reasons. Number one, I love the way the I-cord looks. It's super clean. Another is that the original pattern calls for a Pico bind off, which looks great in the sample and in other ones that I've seen that are knit again with wooly wools. This yarn, when I was doing it, it literally just looked like knots, like knots hanging off the edge. And I did like 10 of them and I realized this is not looking good. Um, and so I decided to do the I cord instead. And I think it gave it just this really, wow, this is not a great way. See, it's been a long time. I'm out of practice, you know. Um, here we go. Let's just do it like that. I think it just gave it this really nice, again, I don't think that it's... <laughs> Let's do it like this. I think it gave it just this really nice, clean ending on both sides um, that's just very smooth and seamless, and I think it fit the properties of the yarn I was using a lot better. So I was proud of that decision and the fortitude I had for binding off again nearly 500 stitches in an I cord but I mean excuse me this would be a beautiful pillow cover I might need to make just a square one figure out the maths and make a pillow cover because I'm in love and my mom is coming on Friday of this week and I am beyond excited to show her I don't keep secrets from my mom not even secrets like surprises gifts we're really not good with that we always spoil things for each other because that's what we enjoy we like to know the only thing she knows is that i've knit her something and that it's a pretty gray color she has no idea what it is and i think she is just going to be blown away so i'm so excited to be able to give her something nice and give her something as a way of saying thank you for coming all this way to spend some time with us Moving on, because I wanted to try to keep this a little bit on the shorter side, I did finish another project that I've shown in the past. 
However, I hope that you laugh at this um, because <laughs> it's how I'm coping. I finished camisole number four by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Here it is. I knit it in, let's see if I can go back a little bit so you get it better. Yeah. I knit it in the recommended um, knitting for all of pure, pure, pure silk um, in the color Dusty Artichoke. I like it. I like it very much. Um, the color is really beautiful. I like the stitch pattern. However, did you notice how wonky it is? Like, let me hold it up to me so you can see. Do you see this? How on one side it goes all the way out of the viewfinder and on the other, it's all the way up here. Do you see that? Do you see it? Um, because I tried it on and it is literally like six inches longer on this side than on this side, which is impossible because I knit it in the round. So it is the exact same size. I think I had a very major blocking issue that created that. So when I block my mother's shawl, I'm going to re-block that and stretch out the other side to match. Another thing is that I knit the largest size in the pattern, which does not go up very high. It's not a very size inclusive pattern at all. And I'm not sure how you would doctor it to make it given the cups. However, it is really very large on me. And I don't know if my gauge is just really off. I didn't really do a gauge swatch. I just said biggest size, whatever. If it's more, if it's more oversized than what the pattern says, I'll still like it. As of now, it's kind of scandalously oversized. Like it's really very booby. Um, and I don't think I want to make the strap shorter and go through all of that. I think I'm just going to reblock it and then maybe make join the two straps in the back to make it look almost like a halter to kind of pull it up a little bit, provided that I have all this extra length anyway to work with. So I really wanted to start wearing it when I finished it because it's the season for it. It'll look really great with this white linen shirt that I have, but unfortunately it needs some doctoring. So I will definitely give you an update on that moving forward and let you know how that works out. But basically I made a very large camisole and it is fococked. It is a cock. Sorry, my mind is combining the Yiddish with the English and it's not really working for me. It is cockeyed, it is cattywampus, it is not right. It is unbalanced, let's say that. So I hope you enjoyed that because that's what I need to uh, feel better about myself. So moving on, I'm gonna be talking about two whips that I'm working on that I'm very excited about. And both of the whips are used with yarn that I purchased recently from Wool Warehouse. So that is going to take the place of an acquisition acquisition section. So let's hop right into the whips. First whip that I will be showing you is the Bridget Bag by Gregoria Fibers. I started it yesterday and since I was ailing and I did really nothing else, I worked on it quite a bit. So I'm just trying to get it kind of, kind of in a state to be able to show. There we go. This is what we got. We got a bottom of a bag and my yarn just fell on the ground. Um, it, it's cool. I really like the stitch pattern. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah. So this is the bottom, obviously. So you kind of get these seashell-esque looking things um, with some garter in the middle and some eyelets to kind of space them out, as well as eyelets at the top when you form that seashell shape. I am knitting it with Drops Bell. Um, it is Basically, I found to be an exact dupe of the Gregoria fiber yarn that is recommended in the pattern. It has the exact same, if I remember correctly, amounts and types of fiber in it. So it's 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen, which because it's a bag, I wanted to match that fiber pretty closely um, because I trusted the designer and felt that they knew what would hold up the best as sort of like a workhorse yarn for a uh, bag and it's going it's going pretty quickly I know it looks like it isn't um, but it's the first time I've ever done Judy magic Judy's magic cast on and there you can see it it's really cool I mean it gives it no you can see that I did it a little tight and that it's like puckering a little bit but it really gives no cast on edge whatsoever it really was very magical to me 
Granted, I don't know if the needles I'm working on, which are Addie's, I believe a 2.5, which is a little bit smaller than what is recommended in the pattern, but it's what I have. I don't think my cord was necessarily big enough to do, I just wanna make sure you can see it all, to do a real true magic loop. And so I, I could do it, it was just a little tight. And so I did it and I cast on and I you know knit around as you're supposed to. And I was like, is this joined in the round? Like it has to be based on like the logic of the cast on, but it doesn't look like it's in the round. Like it looks like it's just, I'm knitting flat, but out. And so I tried to kind of MacGyver it and like switch two stitches from the ends of each needles to make it in the round, which messed everything up. And I got really far. I got to like the first basically seashell motif and just passed it and realized that things weren't really working out for me, so I completely undid it. I cast on again, I went up, and then similarly, I did sort of a silly error, which I was reading the pattern, and I was just really out of it, not feeling well, watching TV and knitting, and I realized I was knitting the stitch pattern that was provided for knitting it flat and not in the round, which was very different from the in the round pattern, and I was like, okay, you know, I'm not that far into it, I just every, every stitch I'll just ladder down and fix according to the in the round pattern. Absolutely not. I did that about halfway around and was like, you know what? If I go through all of this trouble just to have it still messed up, I should just unravel it and start again. So then I started again, again, and it's working for me. Um, I really like it. This color is Almond Rose, which I believe is number, where did I put that ball band? It's completely gone. That's incorrect. It's Almond Rose, I believe it's color number 21. The information will be on the screen. Um, I like the yarn, it's it's good. The only thing is that it is um, all kind of plied together. So I think if I kind of squeeze it like that, you can see that the plies are very loose. Um, so sometimes it's really easy to kind of go in between them and I'll get these little, um, puffs that hang off just a little bit. Let me see if you can if you can see that. It's not a big it's not a big deal. I'm just gonna cut that off. It doesn't happen very much now that I'm being careful. Um, but this pattern does require you to knit four stitches together at once, um, which this yarn I don't think is the most is not the best for it. I really would be curious how it stands up as a direct comparison to the Gregoria Fibers yarn. Um, and if that has a similar issue, just because of like the nature of the fibers that are in here. But something that I thought was funny and my partner thought was funny is that I can already use it as a bag. I just put the yarn in there. It's really stretchy and it seems like it doesn't have spandex in it, you know, and I don't think the viscose works the way spandex works because before I unraveled it the first time, I just stretched it out to see what it would look like with a bunch of stuff in it and it did not snap back. Um, which to me is not a problem. I don't mind if the bag grows in size. I do hope I have enough yarn. I just finished the first ball this morning and joined in the second ball. I have one more ball of it, I believe. Let's check my organza bag. Yes, I have one more ball of it, which according to the pattern should be just a little bit more than enough. If it's a bit shorter than it is supposed to be, it is what it is. I just would hopefully like to have this done before my partner and I and my mother go on our trip to the beach, the Adriatic. We're going to Montenegro and Croatia. I'm so excited to go swimming. Um, so I'm so happy I'm feeling a bit better today so that we'll be able to actually do that. And I thought that would be perfect for the beach. I obviously have other tote bags I could bring with me, um, but I just thought this would be really cute and something I made that I can take with me, an easy project to do in the summer. And like I said, though I had, not like I said, as I said, I had to restart many, many a time, but the pattern itself is actually not that difficult. I don't love the way it's written. There's nothing wrong with the actual pattern itself. There's just, I don't wanna give you know some too much information away, but there's some elements of the pattern that happen at the beginning of round and at the halfway point where you have two markers and it's not, it was not abundantly clear to me where some of those stitches 
when you add a stitch if it should go before or after the round, which is actually important because then if you do it in the wrong place, it throws off the stitch count for the rest in a stitch pattern where having the right counts is actually very important. And I just wish that was a bit, if that was clarified, I did figure it out as I kept knitting basically no, like keep it all behind the stitch marker, I believe. Um, and it's working for me. I did have a bit of an error in the second seashell round, but you can't tell at all. And I just kept going and it's at the bottom and I don't care. So that is that. I'm hoping to have that done soon. It should be done by the next time I record a podcast, which should hopefully be within the three week range as I always intended. My next whip I'm also really excited about and it was inspired by the wool warehouse, wool warehouse Drops sale. I got some mohair and I got it in three different colors. The pattern that I'm working on is the Cloud Bow from the Pom Pom issue number 40. I will go ahead and show you that in a moment, but I just wanted to show you the yarn that I got. So it's all Kid Silk Mohair by Drops. This is in the color 31. I think it's some kind of mauve name i'm not certain um, but this is the color it, it's looking more dusty on camera which is how it looked on the website but it's actually pretty purple to be honest and then i also got the color i know that this is curry um and it's number three it's showing up pretty true to color it's a bit more mustard yellow than the color I was expecting for some reason. And then I also got this color, which is number 34. I believe it's sage green. And let me tell you, this reads very blue, um, like a sea foam green, like an aquamarine. I don't know, to me, it's very blue. So I asked, I knit up a swatch, which I actually think I have right here. Yeah. I knit up a swatch, ta-da. For gauge, but also to see um, the color combinations that I wanted because I initially wanted to do um, the yellow and the mauve together. And then I knitted the swatch and I remember I learned a lesson from my Stephen West. Um, it's not shawlography. What shawl is that? The slip stravaganza shawl, which is that I should stay away from mauves or burgundies and mustard colors because then I... Oh my god, hilarious. I was gonna say I look very Harry Potter and a girl just walked by in a tote bag that said seeker in training with a, the thing from Harry Potter. I don't know, I'm not a big Harry Potter fan. Um, and I knit this up and I was like, it's the exact same problem, I'm doing it again. Um, and after knitting it like this and not really being certain, I was like, maybe I'll do this, the green and the mauve, I think that's really pretty. My partner was like, I actually think the green and the yellow look really good together. I trusted him and I appreciated his input, but I put the swatch on my Instagram story and asked people to vote on which color combination. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram to maybe have a say to help me out because I'm really bad with decision making. It's knit with Madeline. And everybody, most everybody said the green and the yellow. So I followed the advice and I'm really glad I did. And living in my reading is gold bag is my cloud bow. And let me, let me show it to you. It looks a bit wonky right now because it's still on the needles and my wire is not very long. Here we go. Here it is. Nice stuff. Nice stuff. All mohair, baby. <laughs> so I don't know the names of these designers. I'm sorry. I'll put it in the screen. Um, but this is, I almost want to say it's like modular knitting because you start with the front panel and a back panel, then you knit out the sides and the arms. And so I decided to do the green as kind of the main color and then um, the curry as like this striping color. And it's supposed to be like a very large peplum. If I followed the pattern fully and truly, my peplum would have started all the way out here on the sleeve. And instead you can see I brought it in quite a bit. So I have made a number of modifications to this pattern. Number one, because I could not get gauge. Like no matter what I did, I couldn't get gauge. And I was like, you know what? It is what it is. I think I started knitting the size five. 
And then based on that, I kind of tinkered from there. And the way it's constructed, it's pretty easy to do. I started with the sleeve um, following the count provided in the pattern, and it was massive, so big. And I had yellow as the main color because I thought I would do something funky. Did not look good. So I killed two birds with one stone and just frogged it, picked up fewer stitches, um, and then decided to kind of do like fading to the yellow so my stripes get bigger as they go along. And then we have the folded cuff, the folded hemline again, which I really love in the mohair. You add in another strand of it, um, you knit it up, you fold it, you whip stitch it down. And I just think it is just lovely. I don't know why I am obsessed with it. And I think it looks so good on, this is obviously a very bad depiction of it. I love it. The one on the other sleeve, I got a little bit careless with it, so I'm in the process of picking it out now and re-attaching um, it. And I started with the peplum. Again, I decided that I didn't, I don't usually love very high peplums on me, so I don't know why I chose, was like in love with this pattern. It looks so great on everybody else. But I decided that I would pick up the number of stitches that I thought matched my gauge, kind of, um, I had tried it on and it definitely fit me well around my body and I didn't want to add that much more negative ease. So I picked up where I felt was the most appropriate and I just started knitting straight down. Part of that was an error. Um, I didn't read the pattern very well and didn't realize I should be increasing to make the ruffly sort of effect. And I was like, you know what, I'm going with it. And as I've knitted down and down and down at this bottom part, which you cannot tell at all because of how I have it on the needles, I started increasing um, in this stripe right here. So I started increasing, I think I added 10 stitches and then I kept knitting and in the blue, I added another 10 stitches. So what I'm hoping is that it gives you more of an A-line, flowy peplum situation. I think I'm basically just gonna knit until I run out of yarn and I feel like I might be able to get a short dress out of it which is not exactly what I was intending. I was intending for sort of more of a tunic, but a short dress is kind of a tunic. Um, and I don't see where else I'd be using this mohair, at least for the time being. So I think it might be a good idea. I'm just a bit worried, like what if I keep knitting and I run out of yarn and it's at like a very weird length. Um, I'll definitely have enough to make a long t-shirt. I'm in the second balls of both of these. I have more of the curry than I do of this just because of how I decided to knit it. But I have a whole additional ball of each colors and it goes a really long way. So I think when I finish those balls, I'll actually just take it off the needles, which I hate doing, and try it on, see how it's looking and make a decision from there. That should also be done by the next time I speak to you. And I believe that's all that I have. I've really been wanting to work on my flutter butt shorts, but I cannot get gauge no matter what I do. And it's really throwing me for a loop because I've never knit bottoms before. And obviously sizing is really important with things you're gonna wear on your bottom. And I just kind of decided to put it to the side for now and work on things that I'm enjoying and that are actually working for me. Maybe I just need to buy yarn that is more exactly to the gauge of what I'm looking for. I don't exactly know what, what that means for the yarn I currently have, which I love and definitely want to knit something out of. It would make a really beautiful another one of these shirts, but I just don't think I would wear it out. Like this, I might actually wear out, um, not in the weather now. I'm just not certain. So if you have any tips and tricks about adjusting patterns to the gauge that you have or resources for that, I would really appreciate if you could comment that below and any sort of thoughts, ideas you have about the projects I'm working on or some of the things I talked about in this podcast. I love being able to have conversations with people in the comments. Um, on my last video, a commenter named Kate left a number of comments that were so wonderful to read and engage with about some of the things that she's working on, creating a knit kit, all of those kinds of things. And I really appreciated um, her input and being able to talk with her in that format. I did sort of indicate to that subscriber that I would be knitting a ranunculus. Again, I just haven't really thought about it because I've been so worried about the gauge and not wanting it to look like netting and having literal lace weight yarn. 
um, and not really having enough to hold a double. And I just kind of ceased all research on that as I was writing my book chapter and really haven't even thought about it until now. So I'm really sorry about that. I promise that I will look into it more and hopefully figure out a way to do it. And if not, um, maybe get yarn specifically for that purpose. Maybe the pink yarn could go for that. But again, I don't see myself wearing that out in that color. And doing such like a beautiful pattern and such beautiful yarn that I'm not going to wear doesn't seem like the best choice. So I'm figuring that out. I will definitely keep you updated on that. And if you're just here for the actual knitting projects and don't want to hear about me, please feel free to click off. Thank you so much um, for spending some time with me, taking the time out of your busy day, and I hope to see you around. If you like this video, please like it. If you didn't, dislike it. Um, comment some of your thoughts, and definitely subscribe if you'd like to see some more. Now, briefly on to some life updates. So obviously, I'm under the weather, as I've already discussed. Um, I don't think it's COVID. I've been staying inside regardless, just in case, but I'm definitely on the mend. And it's only been two days, so I don't think, and all of my symptoms have been not COVID-related symptoms, so that's positive. I'm really excited to see my mother. I'm really excited to go on this beach trip. Um, it's kind of rejuvenated me, but also at the same time is coming at a bit of an odd time in my Fulbright because I'm coming to the end and I feel like there are a lot of things that I didn't do that I really wanted to do and I've been feeling kind of down on myself about that. And so I finally kind of kicked everything into gear about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, really started doing my work um, more consistently and in a smart way, kind of figuring out things that need to be done now and things that maybe aren't as important. I reached out to a number of scholars. I reached out to another archive I was going to visit. I scheduled a trip to the south of Serbia, which are all things that I've wanted to do and just have put off for some reason. And now that my mother's coming, don't really have the time to do. I was able to do the travels, which were great and informative. And then I got sick and I couldn't go to the archive yesterday, which is a little bit upsetting because it's only open on Tuesdays for like four hours at a time. So I'll be going next Tuesday while my mom is here and then we'll be gone the following Tuesday and then I only have a handful of Tuesdays left and I still need to do a bit more traveling around Serbia to kind of check off a really big to-do box on my Fulbright uh, agenda basically. And so it was a bit of a snare in the road, um, which is why I haven't really filmed a podcast because I felt that my time was best spent elsewhere, kind of getting my ducks in a row and feeling better about myself and my work and the time that I've spent here. But I had, because I'm ill and I have some extra time today and I really do enjoy doing the podcast and I've been doing all of this knitting and not documenting any of it, I'm really happy to have been able to come on and talk about it today. I'm hoping to kind of figure out another format of video to sort of do in between those periods because I will get busy again in the future and I don't want to neglect the people that have joined me here to talk about knitting. So I was thinking of doing more knit and chat type videos. Obviously, I like to talk quite a bit. Um, so that's something that you might sing, be seeing from me in the future. I do still hope to do the more history and sort of theory related knitting videos. I just don't think that is in the stars for me, at least while I am away on the Fulbright. But when I return home, I do hope that I can dedicate some more time to doing some good research on that topic and being able to sort of open up a good discussion. So since I've been talking for a while, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it... Um, end it here. Thank you so much again if you have uh, accompanied me to the very end of the video. I really appreciate it and I do hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, morning, whatever it may be and I'll talk to you later. Bye!